Dale un toque de otoño a tu closet con JCPenney. Con hasta 40% de descuento en suéteres, jeans y accesorios para él y ella. Y espera, porque tenemos más estilos y opciones para ti. Encuentra jeans acampanados, el clásico pantalón negro, abrigos y blazers. Mezcla y combina nuestras versátiles marcas como St. John's Bay, Mutual Weave, A&A y más. Compra con estilo, JCPenney. Oferta válida hasta el 25 de octubre en selección de estilos. Aplica en inscripciones. Detalles en la tienda jcp.com. In a world where everyone was forced to leave the comfort of their homes to get drinks, one hero emerged. Its name was Drizzly, the number one app for alcohol delivery. And it allowed everyone to compare prices on the biggest selection of beer, wine, and spirits and get them delivered in under 60 minutes. All they needed to do was download the Drizzly app or go to drizzly.com. That's D-R-I-Z-L-Y.com to take destiny in their hands. Dun, dun, dun. Hello! Welcome into the Eric St. Joe podcast. Fucking oopsie. Was that Jimmy and Maine? This is the Daily Show, where I discuss news, nonsense, and my personal adventures each and every day of the work we do. Okay, from the Baldwin Ace Hardware Fear Bunker Studio, this is the Eric Zane Show podcast, where I discuss news, nonsense, and my personal adventures. Each and every day of the work week, now featuring, now featuring on Patreon on Saturday, the release of Who Are These Zanes, which is a spinoff of the uh, Who Are These podcast show, where Ben and I rip a new asshole to me. Shock jock DJ attitude. It's probably a good idea. As I sit here, before we actually start to unpack, you know, what I can unpack uh, to to play some of that from that uh, very first episode. This is from, I figured it out, the exact date was October 1, 1993. I was very excited that Dennis Rodman had been traded from the Pistons to the San Antonio Spurs. Apparently, I didn't like Dennis Rodman, you know? And so here I am on this radio station, WKQZ Z93. This is the attitude, uh, Opie era of radio. It's all attitude, man. You're dripping with attitude. And, uh, well, audio check. This is what I did to open up the show. Now, again, I'm on seven to midnight and I'm just playing like Metallica records and shit like that. And, Oh my God. I made like $5 an hour, like legit. So this is, uh, this is how that sounded. Mobile home of rock and roll Z 93, a little Ted for all you, uh, bow hunters out there, a little stranglehold for you. Hey, just got the word off of the wire, hot and fresh. Dennis Rodman is out of here. Yes, indeed. It was traded to the San Antonio Spurs for Sean Elliott. Hey, I don't care if it was a good trade or not. As long as the human vulture is gone, human vulture. things are good in Motown. Loving that. Loving this. White zombie on the Z. <laughs> that is the voice I have done when I impersonate pukey radio guy. Holy shit. Why would you call him the human vulture? Z93. Z93. Hey, who's this? This is Uncle Fester, man. All right. I don't, how you doing, man? I don't know why I just can't say it's Eric. Hi, who's this? Why do I have to say, of all things, Uncle Fester? I mean, that wasn't a good reference uh, in 1993. It's not like anyone was sitting around talking talking fucking Adam's family smack. Holy shit. This is Eric. What's up? Hey, Eric. This is JD, man. I'm up here in West Branch. You, oh, really? Oh. You know me. Okay, you hear that other voice. Ugh. What I would do, and I talk about this with Ben, is I would record those phone calls that you're hearing. And um, 
put them on like a reel-to-reel tape player. And then I would hit play and put that on over the air and then speak into the microphone with this character voice. <laughs> so it was supposedly me and this character whose name was Cecil. Oh, hey, how you doing? Except Cecil sounds like the microphone's different. It's 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 more resonating, so it just kind of flies in out of left field and sounds like shit. Yeah. Big peckers, you know. Yeah, big, big peckers. Big peckers. Yeah, Anyways, uh, I'm stuck here in the shop, you know, and I'm having to work, you know, and I ain't going to be able to whack them and stack them, so could you really do me a big favor? Yeah. Oh, jam on some Bruce, man. Spring Yeah. Fan. yeah. I don't know why I keep saying that and and emphatically screaming the word. Yeah, I'm not sure what's going on. Don't blame me. Uh, it's like a different person. Yeah, you betcha. Hey, man, I'd really appreciate yeah. it. I'm going to be here all night, and I'm going to be cranking and jamming with you, man. Yeah! Cool. See you later, then, Nitz. Whack them, stack them. Yeah! Bye. I thought you said he wanted some Bruce. Ah, he'll like this. Oh, uh, that's rude. C93 with STP. So there I am screaming. And then Maureen says, I don't know why you didn't play Bruce for him. I don't either. I don't know why I did. Why did I? Why did I even do this? Did I just want to be an asshole to the fucking guy? Yeah. Hey, it's Uncle Fester. Fuck you. Hey, can you play some Bruce? Yeah, sure. Fuck off. And then play another song. <laughs> okay. So that's just a small little snippet. That show is on Patreon every Saturday. Uh, I publish it. Midnight on Saturday. So there you go. I just wanted to throw that out there. Uh, I am going to get into the big news of the day. News of the day. Holy shit. Um, this show, is, is, seriously, just got a lot less interesting. Back to talking about uh, the dog shitting on my bed. Uh, giving my um, uh, brother-in-law a shower and my unhealthy obsession with women over 60 with and dirty bare feet. Okay. Holy fuck. Uh, I am pulling back to update on the saga for obvious reasons. That's why you saw and heard the retraction and the apology. There is a story to be told, but I, I, I have to be careful. And especially in this setting, when comments fly, jokes fly, both in spoken word and social media, I, you know, um, I, I can't clean up, uh, any, any more messes. So I, that's it. Myself included out. So I wiped it all I said, fuck it. I don't, I, that, you know, I don't, um, I will, I will, um, honor requests. To, to say the least. Um, however, that doesn't mean that there is not a story to be told and something to talk about. Uh, just my theory as to what is, how this is going to lay out is I would guess that you know who is not going to go quietly into the night with anyone and uh is exploring options and i don't know but you know whose radio company may be exploring something like a buyout so that he who must not be named he who must not be named um doesn't ever set foot in the studio again all right and so that he can be set free. That is just what my gut tells me. Questions. Is there an official firing? I don't know. I don't, I haven't heard anything. Uh, I, the, my, the level of my information of what I know is, is, um, well, it's, it's certain to be sure, but, I don't want to put anyone else in jeopardy because of the things that I may say. So, um, I, you know, there's, it's just something that I have to let go. Um, people have been just reveling in me having to, uh, 
do what I did yesterday in a flurry. They love that. They ha- are loving that. And you know what? They damn well should. Because there are people that don't like me. And I am in full support of you not liking me. I'm not going to get in the way of you not liking me. Who am I to get in the way of you not liking me? So just know that as you sit here on the live stream, if you are a lurker, feel free to let your anonymous voice be heard. That is okay. Um, there is something, to, uh, though, that I think does have, uh, some optics that are, are telling people on Reddit have, uh, commented that, uh, Kelly from the free beer and hot wing show unfollowed Joe on Instagram. And I know that that sounds incredibly high schoolish, but it does have, it does mean something. It really does mean something. It's sending a message. That uh, I'm not on your team. Uh, So people were talking about that. There was a lot going on yesterday. And um, so let me just say, though, um, I realize that when you see all these things going down and the flurry of activity on my end, that's got to be like, boy, what the fuck? What is happening? Well, you know, I can't really say too much more about it. So, I mean, I don't, frankly... Um, what it boils down to is, um, I just cannot have this type of, uh, looming activity. Uh, so I have to pull back. I, uh, I took everything back. I retracted it. I apologized and I'm just going to let it be and, and take it as it comes at this point. Um, I, I'll, I'll admit it. I should not have. Uh, I should not have been on the side of that. I should have just uh, watched. But life goes on. That is the update. When I said the show got a lot more boring, you better damn well believe it. So um, anyway, thank you so much for being here. Thank you for being on the Twitch stream. Aram says it's not worth it. Brandis says, this is all so fucking gross. Mouthy Mitten Mama says, I hope you have good home surveillance. I do. Because I know some a-hole did something to one of the iHeartRadio big guys locally when they got fired. Messed with one of his vehicles. Jesus. Uh... Florida man 814 says, why are you forced to apologize? Well, I didn't say I was forced to apologize. What are you talking about? I didn't say that, Florida man 814. Why are you forced to apologize? Yeah, you know what? I'm not even going to go there. Why can't you talk about it? Well, I'll be honest with you, because I got the fear of God put in me. That's why. Uh, you know, I've never been one to um, bullshit you people. Uh, but that is the reason why. <clears throat> Eric's vehicles are already all dented. By the way, um, the story can be told now because, and this is how my daughter Jackie is going to find out. But uh, this is how I'll get in trouble now. Because Diana ripped the mirror off one of my trucks. Well, she ripped one of the mirror off my, one of the mirrors off my truck. I think I've told you all about that. She might be aware by now. I don't know if I've talked about it. Uh, But. Like forever ago, I went and bought two new side mirrors for that truck. Kept putting it off to replace because the one on the right was 
cracked from me. The one on the left was just damaged from another reason. But it was still functional. Well, Diana ripped it off. She hit the garage or some shit. And uh, so then I went ahead and was actually successful in replacing them. I was so happy about that. And she goes, don't tell Jackie because she always makes fun of me. And so, uh, Jackie, do not make fun of your mother that you now <laughs> know that she ripped the mirror off. She's very sensitive to you because you are just like me. Because I try not to make fun of her. Okay? I probably did a lot more when I was younger, but I don't, I don't insult her. You do. And so, probably not a good idea to do that. I wonder if she's around right now. We got to get a boob update. Um, her boobs are like up by her neck right now. So she looks like former New England Patriots linebacker Teddy Bruschi. Hey, you there? Hi, you be Oh. Damn it. They haven't like settled down. You know, they're up like by when you get that procedure done, it it, it puts them way high and then they drop. So they'll probably per- be perfectly dropped. By the time the wedding hits. Oh, here she is. Hey, hold on a quick second. Oh, go, hold on. Hold on a second. Say that again. I said I, I was watching you live and I knew you were calling me. <laughs> oh, my God. How are, you just gave up and I went to voicemail. How are your boobies, honey? I didn't know you, I didn't know you were going to talk about it. Are they okay? <laughs> Yeah, they're fine. They're not up to my neck. <laughs> it was a joke. Fuck. You just hang up on me? That was weird. Great. And I pissed off another person. This is going horribly, honey. Hi, you reached Jackie the Tuning in. Sorry. Hey, what happened? I don't know. <laughs> Are you mad at me that I talked about your movies? Hello? hello? What are you doing? Oh, this is terrible. Okay. This is... I don't know what's going on. I'm going to try this one more time. Hello. Yeah, okay. There we go. I okay. turned the Wi-Fi off. So oh, I my think we're God. Good. It was terrible. What, you kept wrecking everything. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Are you feeling better? Well, I've, everybody knows that you you uh, you you improved yourself. <laughs> I know. I remember when I was talking to you about it. I was like, "Are you going to talk about it?" And you're like, "I'm not talking about that." Well, I'm not talking about. I mean, not. Well, the thing is, this is this is you. I walk into the room, and you're always like, "You want to see my boobs?" <laughs> Why would you do that? You you love that. You love embarrassing me. I do. Why do you do that? I can't believe you said they're up to my neck. They're not up to my neck. You know, you know what I'm doing. I'm, I'm they a, look they look good. They do look good, of course. But, Don't say that. Well, I mean, I'm sure that they look good. I haven't looked at them. They look. Good. They. I'm sure to people who would look at them, they look fine. I don't want to. I don't want to ever. There is no way that any adult, any parent, <laughs> any dad commenting on his daughter's boobs. I mean, you, 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 you can't say, hey, yeah, you got so you got a nice rack. I mean, it's just oh, ridiculous. Well, then why do you always do that to me? Because it's funny. Oh, I hear something. That's Daisy. I know. The audience can't hear it. Just you can hear it. Yeah. Um, so did you just now um, find out about um, your mother in the mirror? No, I feel like you've told me that. Okay, yeah, don't ever repeat that. <laughs> By the way, I won't. you can't make fun of her anymore. Why? Has she been saying it's bugging her? Yeah, she gets she gets mad. She gets uh, hurt by that because, and I think you got to wait like a few years before you like make fun of her again. Does she actually say it's bugging her? Yes. Oh. Yeah, it, it hurts her feelings. Like, and, and, I, and, I, and here's the thing. If I make fun of her in front of you, like if I say something, like if she's looking at her phone or something like that and not paying attention to you, to someone talking and I do an impression of her. Yeah. And she, and you laugh. 
she gets so <laughs> pissed. <laughs> but that's your fault. Well, it. I think we, you and I, uh, play off of each other. We do. We're two. We're like the same. Oh my God, are we the same? Except I don't have <laughs> boobies. <laughs> I know. Holy shit. Oh my God. I'm, I'll try not to make fun of her anymore. I saw her yesterday, so... So I didn't make fun of her yesterday. Yeah, you you don't want to, man. She she's uh, she gets upset. I, I just love her, but it's it's too it's too easy. <laughs> yeah, don't do it. Don't. <laughs> you have to admit it's too easy. Yeah, I know, but it it makes her upset, and we did we don't want to do that. We gotta we oh. gotta we gotta pull back a little. I, right, lately, I'm in the mood to pull back. Uh, I know. You know, pull out. Yeah. Don't say it. <laughs> Someone asked a question, um, are, are, is the procedure you got under or over the PEC? What happened? I don't know. It keeps connecting to my AirPod and it's pissing me off. Under or over the PEC? Under the PEC, yes? Yes. What's the difference? Why, why, why do they do it differently? I don't understand. I don't know. I'm assuming it just like looks better or it just makes it stay better. I'm not sure. I feel like it's pr- like real secure if it's under the muscle. I understand I'm making chili for you for yeah. a, a chili cook-off at work. Yeah. You're going to win. Uh, I hope so. You will win. I can promise you that. I will make it, and I will deliver it to you. Yeah, you got to deliver it at work. And it's at, like, what time is that? I think it's at 1 p.m., so you got to get here at us. A- whenever before then yeah i can i can pull that off okay also i don't think you have to let cc out today why not well because i have an uh, appointment with my doctor at eleven fifteen, so i might as well just let her out while i'm over there sounds good okay all right okay i love you love you too okay bye, okay, bye. she's a star she is a star All of my children are stars. All right. For those of you that are enjoying the show on uh, Facebook. Wait a minute. Yeah. Facebook, Twitter, and uh, YouTube. I am going to cut you loose. If you want the rest of the show and Adam Balboa, quit asking about the size of the boobs. Would you stop? God, they're bigger than what they were. I mean, what do you want? Asshole. Uh, if you're on Facebook, Twitter, and YouTube, you can pick up the rest of the show as it happens live if you just type in twitch.tv slash Eric Zane Live. Just open up a window on your browser, twitch.tv slash Eric Zane Live. There you'll see it. Hit follow. Give yourself a little fancy username. Contribute on the chat. And off you go. Uh, also... Download the show, the audio, wherever you download podcasts. There's a a few less there now than there were yesterday at this time. Thank you in advance for checking out the show. All right. So I'll send you all on your way. Facebook and Twitch brought to you by Irvine's Auto Repair, Grand Rapids Hybrid, and EV. Where uh, we just dropped off another vehicle. My son, Jim's vehicle, Jim and Aubrey, the van needs to be looked at. Thank you to Irvine's Auto Repair, Grand Rapids Hybrid, and EV. Twitter, brought to you by my friends at Blue Frost IT. And YouTube, brought to you by Frank Fuss, my policy shop insurance. Open enrollment for healthcare.gov starts November 1. Frank Fuss just uh, worked with Joe Martinez. I'm, it's a little sponsor on sponsor crime. Thank you, gentlemen. Frank, thanks for helping Joe. Joe, thanks for banging on Frank's door. You're the man. That's how this whole show works. <laughs> Paul writes, I, en- I envy your family dynamic. Uh, dynamic. Dynamic. You guys actually talk to each other. Neat. What? be talking about come on now 
Jim must have inherited Diana's old van. No, he has. He bought his own van. Thank you very much, Trevor. Uh, with another horrible comment, nothing like big knockers in dad's homemade chili. Sean says, what's with the Penn State shirt, Sandusky? Well, um, it's comfortable. Everyone assumes that I'm like a big Penn State fan. Uh, question. Have they uh, have they started to distance themselves from? I think they have. Haven't they distanced themselves from the Sandusky thing to some degree? Maybe not, because I'm getting a lot of comments from people hating on me because I am wearing Penn State gear. I got this when I actually visited the college when back in the old radio days. It was a radio station that was uh, in that neck of the woods, and we'd go there. And this was like, um, you see. In Happy Valley, uh, they don't care about the Jerry Sandusky incident. So we went there to do the radio show. Now, the problem with some of these radio shows when you do them on the road is when you get away from the flagship station, some of these stations don't have nearly... Well, we didn't have nearly the size audience in these tertiary uh, stations way out wherever than we did in the home station. Happy Valley was one of them. There was two live broadcasts we did there. One inside of the school bookstore and the other one on the street outside of the school bookstore in the dark. Sun starts coming up and then, you know, midway through the show, we we get the first glimpse of daylight. Here we are jerking each other off, trying to do a fucking radio show. Cars go, people going to work. People are like, who the fuck are these people? No one had any idea who we were. We're just sitting there with our dicks in our hands trying to do the show. And it's so fucking embarrassing. Jesus Christ. So now this is like a day after... The Sandusky incident. So it's Jerry Sandusky, uh, all sorts of uh, uh, turmoil, and then the next day we're doing our show. And so no one in Happy Valley thinks that and that Penn State is uh, guilty of anything. No cover-up. They love Jerry Sandusky. There's a free Jerry Sandusky march going on down the street. Uh, they've, got, they've got cars going down with the whole Sandusky family with shirts that say, my dad didn't fuck kids. You know, it it was incredible. And here we are hosting the We Love Jerry Sandusky parade doing the radio show. And so some guy from the bookstore comes out. He goes, here, you have to go ahead and put on this gear. And I'm like, all right, sounds good. All right. So I put on the Penn State sweatshirt and I'm like, I'm yelling yes to having sex with kids. I'm like diving full in. I want to be part of the group. I want to be part of the Penn State mob. I'm saying, everybody, Jerry Sandusky did nothing. I support Jerry Sandusky. Look at my shirt. Look at my hoodie. And then uh, I promptly got on the airplane to leave, and I, I, I wept. New viewer, baked potato underscore zero seven says, what have I stumbled upon? Well, I, you know, I don't know. That is a great question, but welcome to you. Give us some background. Could you, where are you? How did you find this? It's always interesting to get the point of view from someone who's like, what the fuck is this? This asshole is throwing his support wearing a Penn State hoodie to Jerry fucking Sandusky. He's saying yes to molesting kids. What? What What just happened here? Anyway. Too soon for Jerry Sandusky 
pro Jerry Sandusky discussions? I, I I don't know. I mean, time will tell, right? Well, if I, if I suddenly am not here on Twitch tomorrow with a, an email that says, uh, we heard your I love Jerry Sandusky rant. You know, maybe, maybe there is, uh, maybe there's some, you know, credence behind that. All right. The open and live stream of this show brought to you by gift of life, Michigan. If you are outside of the state of Michigan, please go to registerme.org and fill out your donor form. It takes you about two minutes. Very easy to do. Uh, Your organs will save the lives of eight people and improve the lives of hundreds more with tissue and cornea donations. There's a myth that, oh my God, uh, I was hurt in an accident, but they see that I'm a tissue donor or an organ donor. They're not going to save my life. That that is not how it works. Uh, Abandon that. That is purely a myth. Uh, Gift of Life Michigan if you go to G-O-L-M dot org within the state, and again, registerme.org out of the state, you can fill out that form. And thank you to them. Thank you as well to Blue Frost IT, the managed IT service provider for the Eric Zane Show podcast. If you have any tech needs for your small or medium-sized business, reach out to them. 616 200 616-200-8550. Thank you so much to them for being on board with the show. We've got some comments. Look at Bruce and Daisy snuggling. So cute. Bruce kind of looks like he's dead. The new star of the show, Baked Potato 07, says the U.S. is a magical place, man. So we're getting some clues as to the whereabouts, the origin of this soul. Maybe originally not from these parts. That is America. Don't go anywhere. You're going to love this. I'm going to cater the rest of the show to you since you're brand new. All right. I'm going to focus on getting you up to speed with what is going on here. I'll just tell you this for context. Baked Potato 07. I did radio for about 1,000 years. And I was such an asshole when doing that that after numerous times of getting fired from radio stations, I realized I need to stop trying to work with people. So four years ago, I set up this microphone and that camera. This room was unfinished and a bunch of people, most of which whom now hate me, built this studio. Thank you to them. And here we sit for now years. Tyler says, baked potato. If you like this show, you should check out his OnlyFans page. Yes. I uh, call it Culinary Cuisine Jizz Pancakes. That's the big recipe going around right now that I make on my OnlyFans page. Baked Potato asks, he has an OnlyFans? Oh, yes. Are you kidding me? I make confectionery delights with various bodily fluids and substances. <laughs> All right. One more sponsor to mention. It is Sarah Honda Granville. Online at sarahondagranville.com. If you're in the market for a car, I suggest actually going there, visiting Sarah Honda Granville on Kanawha, just north of 44th Street. Uh, If you want a new car, test drive a new car. You get out of the car, you say, I want this car. That's where the scenario changes 
from what you may be used to. You won't drive off the lot in a car that day, but you will sit down with one of the fine people that work there and tell them exactly what you want on the vehicle that you want. Let's say it's a Honda Pilot. I want this color. I want this interior. I want these features. I want this. I want that. I want that. I don't want that. I don't want that. And then just like a short order cook, they go send. And some guy at a production line somewhere in America makes your car. And then it shows up two weeks later. That's how they do it now. There's also hundreds of certified pre-owned vehicles at Sarah Honda Granville. S-E-R-R-A Honda Granville dot com. Ask about his slaughter the Turks meatballs, unless you're Turkish, Chris writes. Hopefully you're not Turkish. Uh, I saw this when I was laying in bed last night having an anxiety attack, and it brought me right back. I guess the song Master of Puppets was uh, brought back into the spotlight Master of Puppets by Metallica, by Talica, because of the film Stranger Things. Master of Puppets is now the heavy metal anthem of a whole new generation. It was heard in quite spectacular fashion on the small screen during 2022's most talked about TV show, Stranger Things. I am seasons behind on that show. Last thing I remember about that show was um okay this is what is in my brain about the show stranger things um a young kid a girl with a shaved head has superpowers and she gets mad and there's a creature i think they call it the demogorgon that um they ended up wiping them out or something like that. And there's a place called the upside down and you go through a door and there's all sorts of shit everywhere. And it's basically, uh, a, a, a kind of like a, a fucked up version of the regular world. So then some kid who they call toothless and then another kid with a bull haircut are involved and a black kid. And it's, uh, uh, uh steeped in eighties goodness, 1980s goodness. So there's that vibe for it. There's also uh, some teenager with luxurious lettuce. Like his hair is perfect. That's about all I remember. And then the kid with the shaved head, the girl, she's a famous actress. Now, um, what's her name? Miley Cyrus. God, it's something. Miles Teller. What is the name of the girl? That plays uh, the she's she, her name is a number, isn't her uh, her name seven of nine, or nine of seven? Millie, that's it. Millie Bobby Brown, thank you. Um, she was like used for experiments, and it was all fucked up. And then there's some sheriff who plays in one of the Marvel movies as a Russian superhero. He's like really great. Everybody loves him. And then that now I've ex- that's the end of my knowledge. Now I also know that this Millie Bobby Brown, last time I saw her on that show, she was a kid and now she's like 46 years old from what I can gather. And I'm like, how did that even happen? Because I could have swore it was just like a handful of years ago that she was like 4. And now she's knocking on the door of 50. So, I don't know what happened there. But it's all weird, and uh, I can't quite put a fine point on it. Um, and she, all right, so that's it. And then she always dresses like, uh, like she's a runway model. I was like, but that doesn't look anything like the kid that I saw on the show. And then what, one of the final episodes I saw the damn thing was when she started running with like some gang or something like that. And there was all emo version of it. I think that might've been season two, but I am so far behind on that show, but everybody's like, you got to watch it. You got to watch it. 
Corey says she hot now, or did it go the other way? Yeah, I don't want to judge her. I don't want to. I don't want to uh, uh, call up pictures of a of a young lady if she, whatever her age is. And and I mean, to me, if it's under sixty, I'm not interested. All right. Well, anyway, I completely digress. The reason why this comes up is because Master of Puppets is like all over the episode. And who knows what the hell's going on in the episode when they play the song. You know, like in uh, uh, the Thor movie when he's down in hell and he's trying to blow up the guy with the big horns and all those demons and they're playing Immigrant Song by Led Zeppelin. Maybe that type of vibe is what they were shooting for. Who knows? So some guy, I think in in England, I'm not sure where, it doesn't matter. Well, some Some guy, some kid. This kid is like, I don't know. Some are saying 11. 12, 13, 14. He could be five or six for all I know. This kid right here, he's, he uh, was busking, you know, um, set up an amp, plug in his guitar, and then play music for uh, for like dollars and cents for, for change, busking. Um, And he started to like do a fucking face-melting shred fucking fest of Master of Puppets. And I think he's got like a backing track playing like uh, drums and rhythm, obviously, because it's just him. And then he's doing like all the leads and just ripping it up. And I'm like, how the fuck do you get this good that young? I'm always impressed when you have a prodigy. Uh, Audio check. Video check. Watch this. By the way, I got to keep it small screen, so no complaints. I take it back. I'm going to large screen it. But it's going to go, well, as large as it can be. Look at that guy. There's a little kid playing behind him. He's like, what the fuck is that noise? So I'm going to, I'm going to age this kid at uh, fucking 10. That is amazing. Holy shit. How do you get, is guitar a breeze? Is it like a really fucking easy thing to do? I mean, did he get like the Mel Bay big note songbook and like three minutes playing hot cross buns? Next thing you know, he's busting out fucking master of puppets. It's got to be a breeze, right? It can't be that hard if a fucking 10-year-old kid is fucking melting everybody's face. Jesus. Well, Metallica caught wind of this. And that that's what you do these days. If you're a, an, an aging rock band or an aging rock star and you see some kid just killing it you jump on board that dave grohl did that with nandy bushell and i mean it uh seriously it was it was like a huge story during the pandemic uh that that big uh, battle that they did so with what metallica has to do is bring this kid up on stage and let him live the rock star life probably a, a bang a groupie I don't know. I mean, who knows? I mean, I can't speak for Metallica. I don't want to do that. Uh, It happened in Cardiff. Not Cardiff Electric, but Cardiff. I think, is that England? Fuck, I don't know. Uh, The anonymous axe slinger. Nobody knows who the kid is. I think they have an idea now. 
because I think a family member weighed in uh, on this topic. Stevie says Wales. <laughs> Jesse says Metallica is probably filing a lawsuit for stealing the music. Corey says Metallica had one of their bodyguards smash his guitar and punch him in the face. TikTok user Josh Blackwell uploaded the video saying young Metallica fan performing absolutely nailing this year's hottest metal song. The anonymous kid has received the sonic seal of approval from Metallica themselves after the band responded to the captivating clip with a uh, set of genre-appropriate devil horn emojis. It's a cover worthy of Metallica's praise with his Ibanez PG double M31 micro Paul Gilbert signature guitar in hand. The unidentified guitar hero makes light work of the thunderous riff. And once the TikTok clip skips forward, absolutely kills the guitar solo in an impressive display of his already competent catalog of technical skills. Without breaking a sweat. And boy, that's the thing. He didn't. He was just like, yeah, whatever. Fucking. I. He's like, I'm only 10 now. But, uh, you know. Fast forward a handful of years, chicks are going to be throwing it at me. That's how there is no need for me to ever discover masturbation. Um, I, I, that hasn't even, but if it did, I mean, this guy's hands are feverish. He would be able, I mean, seriously, he would make short work of his penis without breaking a sweat. The young busker burns his way through the rapid fire, alternate picking passages and migrates his right his way right up the final fret of his maple fingerboard to fizzle through a handful of scorching licks. Out in Cardiff, saw a kid plug in his Paul Gilbert signature and thought I'd stick around, wrote Blockwell in the clip's caption. Did not expect to stay there with my jaw on the floor while he hammered out Master of Puppets flawlessly. Kid has not been named. A commenter on the video claimed to be his aunt and said the young busker will be thrilled to see he's received the nod from Metallica. Fuck. I love the way the world is so much closer. I mean, think about it. When you were that age, you couldn't, I mean, to think that there was uh, any way to do something and have anyone notice you. You know, back in the day, in the 70s and 80s, the only way to get noticed was to either get the shit beat out of you or go bully the gays, which is what they would do in school. They would walk around, they'd find the kids who they thought were gay, and they'd beat the shit out of them. Now, thank God we're trying we're trying our best to weed that shit out of schools, but it still happens. That was the only way to get any attention. Get the shit kicked out of you or beat the shit out of somebody. Now, yeah, shit, if I had a 10-year-old, he could just walk outside, do whatever thing he's good at, and the next thing you know, he's a multimillionaire insane all right good for that kid there was a football game yesterday the bears beat the patriots now the patriots they're all right kind of a uh decent story where the third string quarterback comes out of nowhere i don't remember his name now basil mccray uh bradley at bradley addison smith or so i don't know he comes out, shuts out the lion. Look, the lion's 29 nothing, and now Mac Jones is back. Uh, but one of my favorite things to watch and what a lot of people love is what's known as the Manning cast. So on uh, ESPN or ESPN2, I don't even know which one it is, but you can get it. Just look it up. They watch the Peyton and Eli and sometimes other guests watch the football game and they they like comment on it. This is so great, and it's it's a concept everybody's seen before, but it's awesome. And they're kind of, they'll sit there and watch a play, and then they'll sit there and the replay and make comments about it. Uh, this particular play, quarterback goes down, he slides because he doesn't want to get hit, you know. And as soon as the quarterback does that, the defender is in a tough spot. They have to work hard to avoid the quarterbacks. They don't touch them because you're going to get a penalty. As soon as he goes into that vulnerable position, you're out. So the defender is doing his best to do that, the guy for the Bears. But Mac Jones lifts his spiked foot up to 
uh, rip the guy's ball sack. I'm not even kidding. Hang on a second. Let me get to the full screen here so we can enjoy this in all of its uh, in all of its glory. You see, he's there getting ready to do his big slide. Okay. Mac Jones, quarterback. And then Peyton and Eli have to comment on it. All right, watch the end of this run here. Mac Jones with the slide. Watch this right here. The little oh. kick right. D linemen don't like this. You can't hit the quarterback, but yet he can kick you right in the jewels, right? That's why D linemen don't like quarterbacks. That's that's why? Because that look at the kick. This is a better view. Oh shit! Holy fuck! And then he, he knew exactly what he was doing. Jesus Christ. That should be some type of penalty. He, his, his cleats r- raked his dick and balls. He can hit the quarterback, but yet he can kick you right in the jewels, right? That's why D linemen don't like Look at that. Now, on that, on that first clip, it almost looks like he's just getting the bottom of the, of the pants or the, the bottom of the crotch, but not at all. You know? He he just raked his cock. And it's not like you, you can't assume they all wear like cups because some of these guys don't because they got to move. They they actually won't wear anything. I can promise you this guy is not wearing a cup. Look at that. That is full dick and balls. And that hurt him. Sims back in the uh Oh. Kicking a Houston order if I recall. Kung Fu Billy Sims they called it. Hey, yeah. <laughs> I remember what he's referring to. I'm that old with the reference to Kung Fu Billy Sims. Oh, man. Linda is in attendance. She says he did not learn that at Alabama, I hope. Sean says he's the Indomitian Sioux of quarterbacks. Dirty player. Kyle says this makes me hate football listening to these two. Come on. No, I love the Mannings. Uh, Peyton, he's not been able to really uh, uh, avoid any type of issue from the old incident at UT. There was a uh, horrible incident that was levied against him on sexual assault. And it was it was ugly. And he has managed to Teflon his way out of that one to this day and I've, I've never understood how there was a lot going on there with that would look it up you need it in fact i'll link it up Corey says they are corny as fuck well maybe but that was funny the health profession scholarship program from the u.s army Healthcare team can offer full tuition for med students that's the army difference learn more at goarmy.com slash tuition paid In a world where everyone was forced to leave the comfort of their homes to get drinks, one hero emerged. Its name was Drizzly, the number one app for alcohol delivery. And it allowed everyone to compare prices on the biggest selection of beer, wine, and spirits and get them delivered in under 60 minutes. All they needed to do was download the Drizzly app or go to drizzly.com. That's D-R-I-Z-L-Y.com to take destiny in their hands. Dun-dun-dun. Bruce is just out like a light. Holy shit. Look at him. Loving that. Uh, All right. So um, speaking of football, Jesus, fantasy football, I am, uh, I, I, I got to be careful. Um, And this is what I mean by that, because I am getting the bug. Uh, I, I won again. I beat Aram. All right. And um, I have managed to move to, Uh, five wins, two losses on the year. Okay. I beat Aram yesterday. We have one guy who's six and one, two people that are six and one, and then three people that are five and two, including me. Uh, I have to say that I initially beat the shit out of Chris in Minnesota about how he had too many teams in the league. And he maintains that that was by my order. And I I don't remember if he's right or not, but I tend to believe him. Um, He actually said that I even tried to make it a 25-team league. But he talked me into 20. 
but I think I'm kind of starting to like it now because you got to uh, be very, you got to be very aware of um, what is going on with your team. Like I have um, Ezekiel Elliott. He got nicked in the Lions game. He's questionable. And then you got to look at who um, your players and the teams that they're playing. Like if I have a player that is playing against the Lions, I would start that guy because they suck so much dick. And, you know, the Lions give uh, make it so that shitty players have career games. So that would be a smart move, in my opinion. But um, but there's also other things going on where you have to kind of like, like look, I, I have to see some of you are on this and you don't pay attention. Like I see, I got to pick up a new defense. Kansas City is no game this week. So I got to pick up a new defense. And then yesterday I'm standing out in front of my house with the dog limping around as usual. It's getting dark and I see some, person come walking towards me and they have a dog and uh, i think i know them i say their name and it's wrong go figure it always is they go hey eric how are you i go oh hey how are you and i don't know who it is i even said is that teddy referring to the dog and she said no cooper and I'm pretty sure she's referring to the dog and it was dark. So I couldn't see the lady's face. So I, I'm not sure who it was, but she said Cooper. And I'm like, well, that's probably the dog, but it, I guess it could be you. I don't know if too many chicks named Cooper. So I just said, Oh, hi Cooper. Like in the way I said it, that could be either a person or a dog. Just another way that I'm I'm an idiot when it comes to names and recognizing people. No, hey, hey, is that Teddy? No, Cooper. Oh, hi, Cooper. Are you enjoying fantasy football? Yes, it's great. I, I was going to reach out to you about joining our league. There's only 10 of us, but um, the season started before I could reach you. I, th- I was hoping to see you walking your dog. I go, oh, I would have loved that. Next time, just drop me a line. I'll I'll definitely. Uh, so it was kind of weird because I didn't know her name. Um, but I here's the thing. We live in the golden age of being a degenerate gambler. You can do daily fantasy football. You can do. Uh, you can bet on games in thirty seconds. I can be a degenerate gambler. By just hitting a few buttons on my phone. And um, that's a little scary. Because that is something that I would be addicted to. Anything that hits the pleasure center of my brain. I am addicted to it. Okay. So I'm like, you know, should I maybe start an account and maybe just bet on one game? You know, don't... Doesn't it start out, they say, yeah, just go ahead and enter this name and then you get uh, uh, free play. It's free, guaranteed winnings. I'm like, God, don't do it, Eric. Don't do it. You're an alcoholic. You're going to fall in, but I'm not going to lie to you. I can feel it chewing at me. Maybe this will be my last year of fantasy football. I don't know. Sean says pleasure center. Surprised you're not pounding your pud right now. Sean says I started swift Sunday. Yeah, that's bad. When it comes to the stupid lions, which not everybody gives a shit about the lions. um, At the start of this football season, let me just explain this to you. And then this is, uh, and then I'm going to move on. Um, Everybody was like, oh, my God, DeAndre Swift is going to have a massive year. He's so great. And he hasn't played. He stepped on the field, and he took one step, and then his foot fell off. The guy is a goddamn liability. And then you got this whole Dan Campbell. Oh, my God, the defense is going to be great this year. They're going to be awesome. They stink. They're the worst in the league. Remember that whole business about, uh, yeah, Pro Football Weekly or whatever the fuck rated their offensive line as the greatest offensive line in the history of football. 
They did? First of all, half of them don't even play. They're all hurt. And then they're giving up tons of sacks every game. Jared Goff was on fire at the end of the year last year. He is going to right the ship this year. They've won one game. Dan Campbell, in his career now, has four wins, 18 losses, and a tie. The worst start ever for a line quarterback in history is Marty Morninweg. Dan has a little work to get to that point. Okay? He's got... uh, Morninweg won five games and lost 27 before they finally fired him. So he can pass it this year. Dan Campbell can break that record this year. That's what we need to set our goal for. Cole, who I traded Jared Goff to, said I had to play Jared Goff this week because Josh Allen had a bye. Allen is getting 50 points a week. Goff got me three points. (laughs) Yeah, that was bad. He was fumbling. He was throwing interceptions. Dan is the coach. Jared is the quarterback. You referred to Dan as the quarterback. Ah, it doesn't matter. Fuck it. Who are you, Kenny? Everybody knows what the hell I meant. Yeah, if you listen to me for any amount of time, I'm going to say something backwards or stupid. A new person says, why are you standing like an idiot? Well, I was stretching. I've been sitting here for an hour or more than an hour. So I had to do some fucking yoga moves, you know? It's not easy here. It physically takes a lot out of your old pal, Eric Zane. All right. So anyway, who the fuck did Lions play? Oh, they play the uh, Dolphins. They're going to get hammered by the Dolphins. Jesus. Uh, Okay. As I indicated, open enrollment for healthcare.gov begins November 1. If you are self-employed, in between jobs, or your employer doesn't offer insurance, reach out to Frank Fuss, 616-914-4070. You have to tap into healthcare.gov and get your insurance policy for you and your family. Don't let your health insurance go to the wayside. You want to make sure that you can ensure that you're able to go visit your mental health professional. 616-914-4070. Frank will help you every step of the way when it comes to healthcare uh, on uh, healthcare.gov. He's also the Medicare Advantage Plan and Social Security expert. 616-914-4070 for my policy shop insurance. Love Frank. Uh, Once you reach out to him, he'll send you a link of a form that you can um, uh, fill out at uh, buyinsurancehere.com. Comedy next week, Michael Rapoport coming to town for three nights, fullhousecomedy.com. The week after that, Kevin Nealon. Very, very funny for several shows in the area. Full House Comedy. Full House Comedy is an umbrella of uh, venues throughout the area. Go to their website, fullhousecomedy.com, to purchase your tickets. Uh, Gotta love A&E Heating and Cooling, 616-516-8579. If you need a furnace installed, they will install the Comfort Maker brand of furnaces and air conditioners, 616-516-8579. Thank you so much to them. Also, if you if you want, you can get your furnace tuned up. It's just going to cost you $79. Eric, why can't Kenny comment? I don't know. Oh, my God. That shouldn't happen. I was wondering where Kenny was. Well, we got to bring him in here. That is not supposed to be. Maybe like the thing said, all right, we know you want to get rid of them. Hey, that is, uh, that should not be. I need to repair that. 
<laughs> I've tried everything. Man. Oh, I'm sorry. It, I'm sorry. I figured it was. I figured it was you, and I was like, yeah. "Wow." <laughs> oh no, I, I wouldn't. I would. No, no, no. We're everything's cool. I don't know why that is. I just got to thinking earlier, and I was like, you know, no, not even anybody in chat has uh, made even the slightest no. comment it's about been... anything I've said. Right. Right. And then earlier, Josh was like, where's Kenny? And oh, I put his little okay. waving hand. And <laughs> okay, well, I can't I can't get it right this second, but shut up, Josh. Josh is such a troublemaker. What a cock. He says, Eric's <laughs> doing a good job playing innocent. You know what? You know what? You know what that means, don't you? Uh-oh. <laughs> yeah. Hey, eat that. Well, how you like that, you bad haircut motherfucker? <laughs> I started looking up online. Is there a way to mute somebody like without them knowing on Twitch? And I couldn't find anything. And I'm like, wow, well, shit. really got this shit figured out. No, <laughs> no, I don't have shit. I, I, <laughs> I am ridiculous. Aram says that seems like too big of a coincidence. I think he's asking for one too. <laughs> yeah. Take that. You fucking half breed. <laughs> All right. Uh, when I get done with this show, I'll fix that shit. Well, well, how can you fix it if you didn't do it? Well, I mean, I must have done it, but I didn't. I don't recall ever doing that. Are you wait a minute? Know, because are you doesn't... fishing? Are you fishing for something? Is that what's going on here? Who you, dude? I don't know what's happening. <laughs> I've, I've been... No, I don't. I don't either. But I can find out. I guess. It's super weird. I just started reaching out like, hey, have you seen any comments from me this morning? And they're like, no, are you here? And I'm like, yeah. Well, it's, it's weird. Gonna, it's, I'm going to have to go into the, you know, how you have to like dig into settings and drop downs and things like that. And yeah. Then, and then, maybe because I mean, I've tried everything. So I'm like, well, okay. Yeah. <laughs> I, I think it just realized that um, it just doesn't like you or something like that. I'm kidding. Uh -huh. It's just, it's like he's, he's, <laughs> He's been given so many timeouts that we're just going to go and do Eric a solid. Twitch is like, he really doesn't want that guy yeah. to speak. So we'll yeah. just mute him and we'll not just... tell anybody. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. Tyler says, get him back in here so you can put him in a timeout. <laughs> right. Right. Tyler's so witty. It's funny. Tyler is funny. I spent time Ooh. with him. Did you see that wound? Did you see that wound that he got when the paintball hit his leg? Oh, shit, dude. Yeah, that reminded me of, like, when I was there two years ago and the first hit I got, uh, it was, like, I thought my, my dick fell off. Like, <laughs> it hit right in my crotch, and that was the first time I've ever right, been right. hit by a paintball. God, it hurt. Yeah, I bet. I bet. <laughs> that hurt for a month. <laughs> All right, man. Well, have a good day, okay? All right, you too. I'll, I'll talk. talk to you tomorrow, I guess. <laughs> yes, I'll turn this around. I don't know what the fuck happened. All right. I'll, I'll, in fact, I'll probably let you know later on what uh, what actually uh, went down, but I don't uh, recall. I don't okay, recall man. ever banning all good, you. All good. I, I have a list of people that I have banned, but you yeah. should not be on it. All right, well, that's good news. <laughs> no, no, for sure. All right. Okay. Well, all right, I'll catch you later, man. All right, see you. Poor Kenny. I just wants to chat. I was wondering why the chat was so easy to read today. Excuse me. Oh. Ooh, look at that one. That guy's mad. Suck the roses, 69. Whoa. Nice slander on this show. Typical Zane style. Yeah, I don't. Yeah. Thanks. Thanks for being here. I appreciate that. Surely you can do better, though. Welcome to you. Thank you for supporting the show by being here. You being here helps me, and I'm very appreciative. Thank you, thank you, thank you, anonymous soul. <laughs> this is what I'll do. I'll be anonymous, and then I'll just fire off blasts. I'll just put him in his place because I'm a pathetic loser. <laughs> yeah, I didn't slander Kenny at all. What are you talking about? Where was I? Where was I? Uh, okay. This mom is pissed off because she sent her kid to school and he came back stoned. This is happening more and more. And 
it it's uh you know you can turn around and go anywhere and get a package of I actually know a guy who he um he's uh, a fellow drunk and he informed me that he ate a gummy that and he that he what well, he doesn't ever do that I guess his significant other had them and he ate one thinking it was actually candy and uh, he w- actually went to a meeting and he was like, I'm fucking stoned. I can't believe it. This happens all the damn time. And then there's the people who do this intentionally. And that appears to be the case at this school. Now it happened locally, but still it's, uh, it's worth talking about because it could happen anywhere. Check this out. It's underway at East Kentwood high school after a student reportedly ended up in the hospital after eating a marijuana edible. News 8's Byron Tollefson spoke with the student's mother. He is Now, I, I've never done this. I've never, I mean, I've smoked. I've, I've puffed on an actual joint. Uh, maybe ripped a bowl or two. Maybe the last time I did that, I was 20. So uh, edibles, that's something that I can't relate to. But uh, is it true that if you just eat a, even just a little bit of one of those gummies... It's going to fuck you up. And if you just like throw a handful, you're, it's like that fucking scene in Cheech and Chong when he ate all the acid in the front seat of the car. Is here now with her story. Great reference. Michelle and Brian, Andre Soule, a parent of a freshman at East Kenwood High School, is looking for answers after she says her daughter was given a marijuana cookie at school. It could have been something way worse there. Just thank God that she's okay. It all started last Thursday afternoon when Andre Soule says her 14-year-old daughter, a freshman at East Kenwood High School, ate an M&M cookie. She got it from her friend who bought it from a freshman boy in school. Soon after, Soule says her daughter started feeling nauseous and dizzy, like she was going to pass out. I was emotional. I was like, I didn't know what to do. Like... Her grandmother soon picked her up and took her to the hospital. When she got there, she said the principal had to help her up, use use the restroom. The assistant principal had to use help her use the restroom. Like it was bad. Like she was feeling like she was gonna die. Like it was horrible. Sule says doctors ran tests on her daughter and told her. There was marijuana in her system. God damn. She did not get any treatment at the hospital, but Sule says her daughter did not feel better until Sunday. Sule says her daughter's friend ate the cookie too and also ended up in the hospital. They are unaware of what was going on. They're innocent kids. What the The county sheriff's office tells News 8 it's investigating, speaking with those involved. Deputies say at least one other teen ate the cookie. They're still trying to confirm it was a marijuana edible. Meanwhile, Kenwood Public Schools has launched its own investigation, talking with parents and students. Superintendent Kevin Polston tells News 8, quote, The district has high expectations for student behavior, and based upon the outcomes of the investigation, will take action in conjunction with district policies and in communication with parents. This is not just like a slap on the wrist. This is a serious matter. It could have been something more than marijuana in there. It could have been fentanyl that's going around where they're lacing people's stuff. Oh, yeah. The Kent County Sheriff's Office told us the student could potentially face charges for the incident. Hmm. Well, um, shit. That is uh, desperately horrible. Fuck, I can only imagine. Um, I mean, oh, <laughs> Cole, what the fuck? Cole writes Butterface. <laughs> Kyle says she was also laughing hysterically at everything. There was THC in her system. PTA punch says Josh that is an incredible callback and I think we need to look PTA punch up that was one of the first viral videos that has ever viral videoed it's so viral and so old that it's hard to find Uh, PTA punch yeah it's uh it's the type that you look it up and it doesn't even show up anywhere on the front page. 
Oh, that that's breaking my heart. THC in her system. She had THC in her system. Aha! It says... <laughs> the descriptions say, Bitch Sucker Punch. Granny Falcon Punch Remix. All right. Give me a second here. All right. Yeah, you had this old lady. She was like talking and uh, here, here's the chick in question. And then this old lady, I think she kind of misses it. But behind the young chick who's got a sly grin, she knows that mom behind her is going to give her the falcon punch. Super Smash Brothers Falcon F- Captain Falcon Remix. All right. Audio check. Video check. Show me a moves. Falcon punch. <laughs> yes. Show me a moves. Falcon Oh, it's like her face. Her, uh, the, the chick who's saying Terry had THC in her system. It, it, it's like her face squishes. Look at, she doesn't even see it coming. Oh no. <laughs> that, that can only be defined as a wallop. Jesus. And then yes. they just walk off. And that, that was at the time in the world when you like, that was Okay. I mean, you didn't even get in trouble back then if you hit somebody like that. They would just go, ah, well, you know, you probably deserved it. Falcon punch. (laughs) Yes. Show me a moose. All right. Hold on. I got to do one more frame by frame. I just can't get enough. You see how she like pushes the daughter away and the daughter's like, oh, I've seen this before. (laughs) It's time for me to move. And the very calm in the mom. She's not even like telegraphing that punch. She's not. And then she knows. Now she's she's arming the weapon right here. And and um uh, and and chick big girl here who's about to get punched. She's just talking to old lady. Brings it back. Still going back. Here it comes. Oh my god! It's so swift. And then look at the expression on old lady. She's like, oh my god, what the fuck is going on? Oh, yes. Man. Thank you for the callback to whoever said they might have been Kyle. That was intense. Zero follow through with that punch. Come on, Granny Falcon. You need the original. See my link above. You can hear the impact. Fortunately, I don't see it. It might hold that or something. I don't know. Send it to me on email. Incredible. All right. So uh, mom's pissed about gummies and uh, and the kid's sick. I mean, I can just imagine. Um, uh, it it uh, fuck. That is, uh, that is serious, man. Uh, I'm, I'm guessing that kid will, um, I mean, what do you think? Are we talking about a felony charge charged as an adult? I mean, how do we, how would you feel about that? Um, I don't know. Nowadays, um, kids can get away with a whole lot more. Back then, if you did anything like when I was a kid, uh, when the girls started wearing training bras, you'd go up behind them and you'd snap the bra and they'd be like, Oh, you fucking asshole. And then, you know, the teachers would see that and they would just grab you and attack you. All right. And so it was all settled right there in the hallway. They'd throw you up against the locker. They'd be like that clip and put their fists back. Like they're going to hit you. And then they make you go apologize or something like that. And then maybe send a note home. Sometimes they'll take you to the principal's office and beat you. Uh, had that happen. But that's it. You know, you kind of just leave it there. 
Um, nowadays, it seems like kids actually get away with more. They're trying to end bullying and shit like that, but I think that they actually need to stay. The teachers need to be more hardcore with the students, you know? I think that they actually need to start beating these kids to some degree. Um, go old school on this. I think I'm a big fan of corporal punishment in school. I would say, oh, yeah, welcome. You're a new enrollee. Okay, well, just so you know, the school is called, we changed the name from Cousin O High School to we will kick your kid's ass if they fuck around school. Uh, we hit kids elementary uh, is, is what they need to do. Make it very clear that if you are going to bring a child into the school and they fuck up, they're going to be beaten. And make that a regular thing. I'm a big proponent of that. I mean, it worked for my kids. I think. I hope. Maybe. Maybe not. Bully the bullies, calls, uh, Cole says. Yes. Absolutely. Uh, Chris says, or you'd goose a girl. That would be assault now for sure. Yes. You'd go up and you'd, you'd grab a handful of their ass. And then it would just like, nobody would care. But if anybody saw you do it, they'd beat the fuck out of you right there. Problem solved. It was a hierarchy. Punishment policed in the school. Sean says, I graduated from fuck around and find out high school. It's exactly what I'm talking about. Aram says, I don't see Eric as much of a disciplinarian. Around my house? Well, that's because I was slow. So, at about age three, the children were too fast for me. You know, they've only been walking for a couple of years at that point. But um, if they did anything that required any type of punishment, uh, and, I, and I would go after the kids, I, I, I can't catch them. You know, so then I have to wait until they're like at the dinner table thinking that the coast is clear and then I have to strike and unload my punishment. <laughs> All right. Um, let's see what else I want to talk about here. Oh, I have an upga- uh, update on our pal, the NFK. My brother-in-law, um, as you know, numerous testing done on his liver to determine uh, the health of the liver. And the um, the doc suggested, I think you have cirrhosis. Took a look at it, ultrasound, and uh, he right away said, well, that can't be. I go, why? And uh, armchair doctor, NFK, said, well, because I only drink a little bit. I go, what do you mean? He says, I only have two or three. And I just said, oh, okay. Now, I wanted to say you have two or three a day every day for the last many, many years. And then you had many, many more beers a day every day for many years in the past. But I don't want to, I'm like, I don't need to bring that up because it's going to come up because he goes to see a liver specialist and uh, she determines uh, through just Q and a with him and all of the other markers that have been indicated by testing. She goes, oh, you have cirrhosis. But you don't have the cirrhosis where I give people the, the information that they're going to be dead in two or three years. But you do have cirrhosis. It's early. So this is what you're going, going to do, Mr. NFK. Um, no, more, no more beer for Kevin. Um, and so she said, uh, and then I, I couldn't believe he admitted this because, as I had mentioned before, uh, he says, yeah, I, I just have two or three a day. And she goes every day. And he goes, yeah. And she goes, yeah, that's too much. It is. And she goes, how much beer did you drink in the past? And I couldn't believe he admitted it. And I hadn't even heard this. He goes, oh, 10 a day. And she goes, oh my God. And he, she goes every day. And he goes, yeah. For how long? He goes years. And she goes, yeah, that's, you drank yourself to cirrhosis. That's what you did. I love this doc. She is just looking at him like he's a fucking idiot. And she goes, uh, all right. And then she does like a physical exam on him. And uh, She goes, I don't feel anything weird. I think you're going to escape if you stop drinking. What about N.A.? 
no, nothing. You will not drink anymore. So he had just bought a fresh dirty 30 with like the Halloween motif on the side of it. Bush Halloween, creepy beer, whatever. Uh, Have a great Halloween party. Drink a bunch of bush and puke onto the ghost. And uh, he got in the car and he goes, can you please get that beer out of the house? I go, yeah, get all of them out of the fridge. I go, of course. He goes, but you drink the NAs. I go, no problem. I'll just get them out of there. You're fine. And she also gave him some medicine to help with the cravings. He doesn't take it. And he's not drank one fucking beer. The guy is on fire. I mean, he just shut it down. And uh, I am so proud of him. And I've been telling him, I go, dude, I don't know how the fuck you do that. Because I'm a raging alcoholic. And, uh, you know, I'm a, I was white knuckling it for extended time. I mean, it was, it was touch and go. Jesus Christ. I probably shouldn't be drinking those NAs. I think I'm breaking some type of drunk law by doing that, but whatever. It works for me. Uh, I, I hadn't drank any NAs ever, ever until I stumbled upon one and took a sip and I got taste just like beer. But there is some alcohol in it, so I am probably definitely breaking some stupid rule. People are looking at me like, you're a fucking idiot, but whatever. I'm fine. I've never, I've never fallen off the wagon, even once. But he is on, and he's doing awesome, and that's a damn good thing because the doc calls me yesterday, and she goes, okay, uh, and you also know that he has hyponutremia, right? And I go, yeah, I've heard that. Can you remind me of what that is again? And... uh she uh, she said that is low salt, low sodium. And that's come up before. And they've said to him, quit drinking. And he said, fuck no, I am not. I'm not quitting drinking. This is before he found out that his liver's dying. But they said, um, the doc said he has hyponutremia. And I go, well, good news. He quit cold turkey. He hasn't drank in two weeks. Okay. Josh, with this dude put salt on Hot Pockets, how the fuck does he have low salt? I don't know how it is, but for some reason, he does. And I put that variable out there because the doc said he has uh, low salt. I go, well, wait a minute here. I've got uh, Jimmy G- Jimmy Deans and Hot Pockets here that says he doesn't. And they said, uh-uh. He has a low sodium. It has to do with the alcohol that will improve. So that probably shit now that he doesn't have, it was probably a perfect balance. Now that he's quit the alcohol, his sodium is probably going to go up to like 11 times that of a normal, uh, Andre, the giant size human being with all of the fucking Stouffer's he eats. Okay. So that actually is, uh, is impressive. And then she said, and, um, um, in they they tested the liver function through blood in various variables and numbers and stuff like that, and they can determine through the blood draw how far gone the liver is damaged. All right, now if the number is about forty fifty, you need a new liver. You would then be put onto a liver transplant list to get a new liver. Okay, it's Mickey Mantle. So like that level is Mickey Mantle level. Um, he's at, uh, Tom Brookens level. He has a seven. So he is far from needing a new liver, but he was starting to destroy himself. So, um, I got this information yesterday and I got to pass it along to him. It's crazy. I'm passing it along to you before I pass it along to him. But, uh, I haven't had a, I've been busy. I've been busy, but I just want to pass that along. Can you believe that? You just stop fucking drinking. How the fuck do you do that? That is that is hard as shit. I mean, I did it, but I mean, not like him. Um, I mean, I did stop cold turkey, but it doesn't appear like it's a, it affects him in any way. I think he just drank because he wanted to. I don't think he drank because he was addicted to it. I don't think he has that special something something that makes drunks drunks. Because <clears throat> for me... 
when I drink. I'm just a different person. Okay? When he drinks, he just sits there and watches TV. And even when he drank like eight to ten beers, he'd just sit there and do that and then just get up more often to go pee. So I have no idea. Uh, maybe he is not an alcoholic. I never said he was, but he needs to stop drinking. So I'm glad he did. All right. Moving on. Have any of you seen that nationwide commercial for the guy who has been um, telling you to make the switch to like his home solar company? And uh, in the background, you hear, we're not going to take it. No, we ain't going to take it. You know what I'm talking about, don't you? He's saying it's time to start the solar revolution. You know, uh, this is that commercial. And the guy, he he just looks like a scumbag. The guy who says it. He, I don't know. It's something about guy who wears T-shirt with suit coat, stupid short hair, looks like a pro wrestler, uh, buff and tennis shoes. Makes me think he's he's a scumbag. Look at Everybody's like pissed off and they're ripping up their energy bills. You see, they actually put an ad out in the Super Bowl. This is the guy who was in charge of it. This, uh, this is Jason Waller right here. Never trust bald guy who dresses like this. Say no to power outages. And there, there's the guy throwing away all his food in his fridge and he's frustrated. walking through the street like a like a blm rally a bunch of white people in rich neighborhoods with their signs saying fuck no we're not gonna take it yeah fuck george floyd we're here to say that we're not gonna take it with high energy bills i'm jason waller founder of power home solar and i'm leading a solar revolution come on what happened come on all right hang on i don't know why it stopped but i want to see it you get the idea this is the dude. He's saying we're not going to take it, people. Come on. get Who's with me? And I'm leading a solar revolution across America. Join me and the millions of homeowners who have already made the switch to solar energy. Homeowners are fed up with their high utility rates, and they're tired of their power outages. Join the solar movement, America, because right now I'm making solar affordable with the first 12 months on us. Power Home Solar, it's time to own your power. All right. That was February of 2021. September of 2022, he was out of business. They went belly up. I did not know that. I'm, I wish I would have heard about this. Because this guy made such a huge deal about, oh, man, I'm telling you, it's going to be great. And uh, he uh, w- would install, like, these Generac fucking things in their ho- in your house. And, uh, you know, I mean, I'm guessing it was a pricey endeavor. And now um, there's no setup to repair any of the problems. And now you have all these people who had this product and they're fucked. So what the hell? Doesn't uh, bode well for the solar energy industry when you hear stories like this. You know, I'm guessing that um, uh, uh, people who are all about uh, alternative energy sources um, would would be disappointed that this happened. You know, and and wouldn't want anyone to know that something as uh, horrible as this happened. But. I mean, no one was buying it, and it went belly up. Cole writes, if solar was better, we would all have it. It's not. (laughs) Corey says if he's out of business, then not many people had it. True. But a few did, including this dude right here. A solar company has gone bankrupt, leaving some customers here in West Michigan with systems that don't work and tens of thousands of dollars in debt. New at 6 o'clock, Kyle Mitchell is working to get some answers. 
This system cost about eighty-two. Oh no! And right now, it's not producing. Look at that. Usable energy. Look at the size of that thing. That guy had that installed, and it, look at look at how vast it is. Small connectors here. Steve Poole was excited about having solar panels in his backyard. I figured in my retirement age, I'd have less of the utility bill. The panels were put in about a year ago, along with a battery system in the basement, and were working until recently. But the company that put them in, Pink Energy, went bankrupt. Uh, Power Home Solar changed their name to Pink Energy. And Poole is left with a system that's not powering his home or feeding energy back into the grid. And now he's having trouble finding someone to fix it. Most of them don't want to touch it because of the warranty issue. Should have changed his name to Belly Up Energy. Hey, oh. saying, oh, no, we're not going to warranty it. They put it in wrong. By the way, if you live in this type of area with cornfields behind you and you're about this age and you live in the middle of nowhere, this is how you look. You, you've got, you, you must have suspenders. And thank God that he does, frankly. This is a buff, a buff uh, uh, man that everybody wants to have sex with in communities like this. Um, the Better Business Bureau in Charlotte is handling complaints since Pink Energy was based in North Carolina. It's over uh, 1,200 now. The BBB has received complaints concerning sales practices, products not functioning, and customer service issues. The president of the Charlotte chapter says customers should contact Generac to request warranty service and file a complaint with their state's attorney general office. Contact an attorney uh, to see what they would need to do if they want to file a claim with the bankruptcy court. Uh, companies listing over $100 million uh, in assets. Peak Energy released a statement on its website that reads in part, quote, due to rampant consumer discontent resulting from faulty Generac solar equipment, Pink Energy has been forced to close its stores permanently. Wait a minute. Due to rampant consumer discontent resulting from faulty... Ge so they're kind of blaming Generac? We remain steadfast in our call for Generac to do a national recall uh -oh. on its defective SnapRS units. Well, all right. Maybe. Who knows? If it's if it's pink or if it's Generac, doesn't matter. These people are in... I'm like, ah, oh, fuck, what do we do now? Generic says it will stand behind its equipment, writing in a statement, customers may have experienced certain issues with a particular Generac component. We are committed to getting those upgrades and warranty replacements taken care of as quickly as possible, and those steps are well underway. Poole says he's hopeful his solar panels will be generating power again soon and thinks the issue might be with the Generac inverter. I can you imagine if it's just no problem at all. It's like something's not plugged in. He's like, whoops. I don't know if it's the same problem everybody else is experiencing, um, but because I can't get anybody out here to even look at it. In Van Buren County. Now, if you excuse me, I got to go euthanize my dog. Oh, my God. Yeah, that would be a drag. Uh, hello to baby Ruth. Good morning, all. Kyle says, a lot of times people with solar panels take loans against their home to buy them, so now they have another lien placed on their home. $85,000 to set that up. My God, that's expensive. Uh, what about like a windmill? It wasn't there, uh, wasn't that like making the rounds where you could install like your own, there was a company near here where you could put in your own small little windmill and it would kind of like... Um, it just assist in it, you know, would uh, uh, turn a uh, turbine and, uh, and kind of give you a little bit of assist, <clears throat> a break and you get a, um, reduction in cost from your energy bill and you could sell it back. Same thing as that. But I mean, I don't think that there's anything that's going to, uh, at least not right now, um, that's going to replace what we have right now for the current system. But that's just, what about if we all had, a very minute nuclear reactor. Something tells me that that wouldn't work. Still stuck in my brain is that uh, documentary on Three Mile Island. And I'm like, oh my God, we are done. Aram says, is Eric saying windmill? I might have. Windmill? Windmill is what I meant. A windmill, not a windmill. Sorry. Okay, I am excited to tell you that we have a brand new business on the show. It is M37 Hackers. 
advertising. Smack dab in the middle of that giant city of Middleville, Michigan. M37 hackers, Reddit M37, can't miss it. They are uh, putting the final coats of paint on M37 hackers right now. So what you're going to do there is we're all going to get together. We're going to go there. Golf simulators. How much fun is that going to be? It's going to be awesome. M37 hackers. Uh, Stay tuned. I'll let you know when they open up. So if you've never been to a golf simulation facility, especially during the cold months, so much fun. You can play one of hundreds of courses. You can get together with your bro friends, hang out. We're going to do parties there. It's going to be awesome. M37 Hackers opening soon. Follow them on Facebook. <clears throat> Excuse me. While I have you, the Mario Flores Lakeshore team of Van Dyke Mortgage, 231-332-6505. Love them. If you are in the market for a mortgage, reach out to Mario. It doesn't matter where you are in the U.S. It could be anywhere except South Carolina, Hawaii, Alaska, and Maine. Mario can help you get into a loan, either a refi. Maybe you need money out of your home to pay off credit card bills. And uh, yeah, we're in kind of a weird spot right now because interest rates suck dick. You will be getting a new loan. But if you need to get that house right now, get the mortgage. You're going to get the house. And then as time passes, those rates are going to fall over time. They will. Don't know when, but they will. You get another loan. Lower rate, you will pay less. But if you're in the market for a home right now or you need a refi, call on Mario. He is the nationwide expert that can help you. 231-332-6505. Okay, and batting last in the lineup, the Kent County Health Department. Information about October being uh, domestic abuse month here and around the nation at uh, accesskent.com slash health. Also, don't forget, if uh, anybody you know or you yourself need to take advantage of the WIC program, you can do so. The Kent County Health Department has all the information you need about getting started with that. So you can get your little card there that has uh, all the allotments for you. Milk, cheese, bread, staples to keep the baby formula to keep the family fed. You pay into it your whole life. Take advantage of it when you need it. Might not be you, but it could be someone you know or love. Uh, Give them the option as they try to um, keep the family fed, for God's sake. Accesskent.com slash health. All right. Who is your asshole of the day? You can throw in a nomination, but I know who it is. Oh, yeah. Asshole of the day brought to you by TC Paintball. The asshole of the day is Mac Jones for trying to rip that guy's dick off on Monday Night Football. That was horrible. Holy shit. All right, folks, that is going to do it for this edition of the Eric St. Show podcast. As always, I'm eternally grateful for you checking it out. Thank you. Spread the word. Let them know that I'm here. Till next time. I'll talk to you down the road. I got the Patreon happening a little later on. And I also have Smarter Than a Former Drug Dealer Trivia at 1030 with Dale. All right, folks, folks have a good one. See you. Bye-bye.
tired of long waits and rushed care at the ER and urgent care clinic? Next time, stay home and let Dispatch Health bring the power of the hospital to you. I call Dispatch Health. A care team of medical professionals actually come to your house. They're the same caliber of people that you would see if you were at a hospital or an urgent care. Dispatch Health can treat most non-life-threatening emergencies. They can do the x-rays, they can do stitches. Urinary tract infections, blood tests, urinalysis, ultrasound. It's almost everything that they can do at the ER. You never feel rushed. They're there for you and only you. I felt like their only patient. And it costs no more than a trip to urgent care because Dispatch Health is covered by most insurance, including Medicare. See if we serve your home at DispatchHealth.com. Dispatch Health really went above and beyond. It's wonderful to have care come to your home. House calls are back, and they're better than ever. Learn more at DispatchHealth.com.